Hello, Ailsa Meyer Adui, Adama Story, Stone Soup. I'm Ailsa Meyer, and here's the story of Stone Soup. It was before the time of self isolation. But the sad thing was, Loads of people in this village were living as though they were self-isolating anyway. I mean, most of them didn't even know their next door neighbour. But less than a mile away, there was a family of travellers who'd parked up and camped out next to the beautiful river just a few days ago. They had in their collection a whole variety of amazing ancient musical instruments that had been passed down generation by generation over many borders throughout the world. But it was not these amazing musical instruments that were their most prized possessions, no. Their most precious things of all were Sospan Vaur, a huge cast iron saucepan, very much like a cauldron. A small, smooth sided stone the size of a child's palm. And most importantly of all, a recipe, a secret recipe that did not need to be written down. This was for the most delicious thing you'll ever taste, of course, stone soup. Gwen, the youngest girl in the family, heard it first, a gwint, the wind. She nudged her brother Yuan. And in less than a minute, the whole family was gathered with the saucepan, saucepan vaur, the special stone, kerig arbenig, and the recipe which did not need to be written down, the recipe for stone soup. And instruments and all, they set off to the village. When they reached the first door, they sent Gwen because she was the youngest and cheekiest and she knocked. Hello. Hello, an old man answered. Beth Tunisia then Cariad. Oh. Um, hello, Oitin, I mean a Dachin Kyle, tippin back or menin, please. Do you have a little bit of butter? Achos, um, we're making our delicious stone soup tonight, but we just don't have any butter. Um oh. menin. Dun problem Cariad, just a second. And he trottled off to his kitchen, coming back with a little knob of butter wrapped in some greaseproof paper. And she took it, yelling, Dioch! and skipping off, threw it into saucepan var, and they were off, weaving their way to the second door. The second house had an orange door, and orange was Yuan's favourite colour, so he went up without being asked and knocked and... Hello! The little old lady answered. She was barely taller than you, Anne, and her voice sounded like the creak of the door. Like, Oitin yawn, Karad. It's like, oh, hello. Um, do you have any neonin? Do you have any onions? Um, we're making our special stone soup tonight. Kaul arbenig yawn. And, um, do you stim neonin, Evony? Um, we don't have any. Do you have some? Um, hmm, that we then will get coffee or just, just a minute. Just a minute, Bach. And she hobbled off to her pantry. Oh, coming back before too long with two prize winning onions, Nyonin Arbenig Yaun or Gerthihi. And he took them and ran off shouting, Dioch! Threw them into Sospan Vaur, and they were off. And the family wove their way, music and all every house in the village and you know what nearly every villager 
gave them something for Sospan Valor. Before too long, Kinba here, Roy the Sospan and Llawn Yawn. The saucepan was totally full of delicious vegetables, most of them grown in their gardens, and wow, it was a feast. They didn't always have this reception. Well, they took it to the centre of the village green, and whilst some gathered kindling for a fire, others chopped the vegetables into the pot, and others played music. <laughs> was bubbling away, Roy, the cowl in Berwi, Aratan, and the musicians were... And the delicious smells and the music were intertwining and wafting into the villagers' windows, and they just could not resist, one by one. They joined the travellers in a circle on the village green. One by one, they joined in the song, each with very different voices. My peace, Marianne, wedi brifo, ada with the glots the mignach. My babbin on a crib on creo, ar gath wedi scrap o Johnny Bath. Saspan vach, and ber we are a tan, saspan vach, and ber we are a Pan, Roy the Cowl, and Barod when the soup was ready. They'd sung every song they knew and they told each other stories and they were having such a good time they almost forgot to eat it, but they didn't because it smelled so delicious. And the little old lady from the house with the orange door had gone off while no one was looking and come back carrying a stack of bowls that was taller than her and goodness knows how she managed to not drop one. But soon they were gobbling the delicious soup and it really was the most delicious thing they'd ever tasted and there was just a teaspoon left and the stone, a kerig arbenig in the bottom of the saucepan. And well, oh, they'd had such a good time. The villagers tried to persuade the family of travellers to come back every week and eat stone soup with them, but oh, they wanted to promise, but they couldn't quite promise because they knew that the wind would take them to where they needed to go. And Perhaps their stone soup adventure will come to me or come to you or even bring us together next time. And that is the end of the story. Dama doeth a story. But is it really the end? Because how long is a piece of string and how deep is a pan of stone soup?